On today's episode, we break down the Monday night matchup, which we had a lot of fantasy action for that, but more important, it is waiver day, and there are a lot of juicy waiver pickups. We break down all the running backs and the wide receivers. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore is here. Hello. Mike Wright, back oh, in the building. It's good to be back. I'm Andy Holloway. We have a waiver wire episode for you. We'll talk Monday Night Football, NFL news. Before the show began, I, you know, got a game seven with the most delightful, you know, the Arizona Diamondbacks with baseball, baseball fans Yeah, here. what is that? And uh, they're facing the Phillies in the game seven today, and I'm excited about it. And, you know, Jason's throwing out some baseball knowledge this morning, bringing up Cal Ripken Jr. Mm -hmm. The fact that he had beautiful eyes, which is true. I, but yeah, I was not aware of that fact, but I've seen photographic evidence now, and, and it's, it's true. And Mike throwing out Cecil Fielder, so you can see they've been tracking along. Now, Jason. Wait, you you're telling me those guys aren't playing anymore? No, it's been a minute. Hmm. Yeah, Cecil hmm. Fielder is so I should drop him. Yeah. From my from my fantasy baseball team. Uh yeah. Yeah. Cecil especially. Um Welcome in. <laughs> no, Cal Ripken Jr. today <laughs> does not look the same. No. Um so we'll be maybe we'll be tuning in. And the Phillies fans, they've been real Philadelphia all over the the Twitter <laughs> sphere. So that's been a good time. Uh, Matthew Betts, shout out to the monster. Soon to either be, uh, uh, yeah. Employed or unemployed. A real problem for us or in a depression. Um, okay, here we are. Monday Night Football. Woo! Everybody saw this coming. Vikings 22, San Francisco 17. We have a losing streak for the 49ers. And not a good one. <laughs> Uh, Not a like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's you lost to a backup quarterback and to – didn't they lose to the Browns? Mm -hmm. I see. Yes, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, they lost yeah. to a backup quarterback, and then they lost to the Vikings. Everybody loses to the backup quarterback in Cleveland <laughs> at this point. But, no, I mean, look, this was a weird week for defenses. The Lions gave up 503 yards to the Ravens. They were one of the better defenses heading into the week. The Browns, yes, they won. They won 39-38 to give up 456 yards to Gardner Minshew. The 49ers gave up 450 yards, maybe even more. They could they could still be passing on them right now. But no Justin Jefferson. No problem. Kirk Cousins, what we determined, maybe the prime time Kirk Cousins, maybe he knew that everyone was watching games, you know, game seven of that Astros Rangers game, and that he was just mm. maybe you know, the, the the cameras weren't on him as much, but he dominated. Jordan Addison, 123-2. and two. Hawkinson, 11 receptions. Brandon Powell got involved. K.J. Osborne, Cam Akers. And here's Brock Purdy. Two consecutive losses, 272 passing yards, two interceptions, one touchdown. McCaffrey, mostly held in check. I know that's a weird thing to say when you have... Yeah, don't, that don't sound right. It's true. Uh, what? It's absolutely true. When Christian McCaffrey gains 45 rushing yeah. yards on 15 attempts and at three a carry and doesn't really have a, you know, any impact in the first half of a game other than a goal line carry, which anybody could have done, um, yes. they, they held him in check completely. Yeah, fantasy yeah. football, he delivered because he had two touchdowns, had some receptions as well. But I, I agree with Andy that that's that McCaffrey was getting – it felt like he was getting stuffed at the line – constantly yeah in the running game obviously he yeah. had his longest receiving touchdown of his illustrious career 
Uh, so hard to say completely 30, 30, held 35 yards. That is his longest touchdown reception yeah, so of his what? career. So what? So what? Who cares? Yeah, he made, well, for he, fantasy football. He made one yes. play in the game. Okay. You're he talking made one for, play. for fantasy football. They did not hold him in check. He Correct. had multiple touchdowns. Were they trying a, to hold him into fantasy football a, check? Oh, we do a fantasy football show. <laughs> Forgive me. I thought we were talking about relevance for We fantasy. were talking about the Vikings winning the game. It's 22-17. They'd be... They beat the 49ers. Here's, here's what happened. Andy wasn't playing against Christian McCaffrey. No. Jason was. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> that's they, why they didn't know So that's Jackson. why he doesn't think he's in check. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, look, they lost. They scored 17 points against yeah. the Vikings defense. It was a shock to everybody. And two bad picks by Purdy. They were both very ugly. Yeah. And and I know Al Borland needed like three points from Brandon Ayuk for half the game, and you know Brandon Ayuk was not involved late in that game. One desperation uh, shoe top uh, drop, and then you know it was a lot of Ray Ray McLeod and Juwan Jennings. Yeah, I mean Juwan Jennings and Brandon Ayuk had almost the exact same line: five for forty-seven, five for or five for fifty-seven, five for fifty-four. Um, more targets going Juwan Jennings' way. They, they they seem like they really could use Debo and really use a left tackle. And two straight losses. So, I mean, it, any change of view in terms of uh, where the 49ers are headed or is this just one of those NFL weeks where I'm things going, get turned upside down? I'm going it's just one of those weeks. But it's they they better right the ship because the – the sentiment, I mean, not that the locker room will be affected by it, but it's like if Brock Purdy, he he has played incredible to start his, his year, but it's everything is still, Brock Purdy's a system quarterback who is executing what Kyle Shanahan needs, and now when they've needed him two weeks in a row, it hasn't worked. So he, he doesn't have that the draft capital, the huge amount of success to fall back on, Saying if if he has a a third bad game, people are gonna start getting loud. Would you rather have Brock Purdy running this offense or Dak Prescott? Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that is interesting. Um, like I'll, if they could just do a clean swap, would would they do it? I think they would do it. I, I saw so. people uh, you, uh, with contracts and age and stuff involved. I think they'd still go Purdy. Just the player I'm talking about. Like, who would you rather – just the player on the field? I think you'd rather have Dak. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it, it's it's it, close. Yeah, it's it's weird. I know I, you'd rather have Kirk. We have – oh, yeah, you that's would. That's what's so funny. Is that's Kirk, a great point. Kirk Cousins is – if you put Kirk Cousins on this 49ers team, uh, I mean, they would be the, – Unstoppable. Unstoppable. And there, that was the expected plan a couple of years ago before he signed with the Vikings. It seemed like everything was set up for him to reunite with Kyle Shanahan – Oh, he would have been littered with injuries in San Francisco. <laughs> That's true. That's what would have happened. Um, but, you know, Madison was held in check, didn't do a lot. Well, that's the the, the other question for me is the what's going to happen now with Akers versus Madison, where, I mean, Madison was still, you know, had over 50% of the snaps, but this was this was the most Akers we've seen. He Akers out-touched Alexander Madison, so... Is something to keep our eye on. Nobody takes harder hits than Alexander Madison. I don't know if it's his body angles or what, but he gets blown up mm -hmm. all the time. And he came out of this game briefly because I, I don't think anything happened other than, ouch. <laughs> all right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jason, our injury expert of the day, uh, explain to me how Jerome Ford now has a low-grade high ankle sprain. Well, the, the, the location on the leg is north, <laughs> and the, uh, the severity of the injury is south. So that's, mm. that's the okay. low-grade high ankle sprain. He's mm. probably going to miss a handful of weeks here, and it's a running game that we want. Yeah, Pierre Strong is going to be a, a strong yep. consideration for waivers. Today, Kevin Stefanski, they are waiting on an MRI on Deshaun Watson's Brain. shoulder. Uh, shoulder. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. But this is how you do it. Like, at, with with the game, the way that it played out of, he would, we're checking him for a concussion, and, of course, they, they have to report, no, he's cleared concussion protocol. 
why is Deshaun Watson not in this game? What is happening? This is how you do it. This is how you cover yourself. Even if he's not hurt, you just say, we're going to go get you an MRI just to just to check things out. I have to believe – I completely agree with what you're saying. If I was a coach and he yes. wasn't hurt and you don't put him back in the game because the backup is playing better, all of those things are true. I'm saying we're getting you an MRI. Yeah. Just trust me, buddy. <laughs> but – yeah, he's super he's, hurt. He's super he's hurt. Super I mean, hurt. It, it, the way he was throwing the ball was like just like he had no arm strength whatsoever. Agreed. Dawson Knox, wrist surgery, unknown timeline. Okay. Dalton Kincaid. Here we go. O'clock. This is actually a pretty good week for waivers. Like, there's a handful of almost every position that I think is worthy of picking up. The tight ends this week, there's there's – like three solid, regularly available pickups. Justin Fields, doubtful for week eight. Bilbo? <laughs> Bilbo is in. It's a great matchup. The Chargers have been exploited in their secondary. Um, I don't – you know, I looked like this morning I was researching, can, can he be a stream of the week? Because the matchup is so great. And ultimately no. I was like, nah. You can't. No, I, I don't remember the – the exact stat i'm seeing if kyle can dig it up real quick but it was like in a win he passed it, for like 160 yards or was, something i think it was like the second lowest average depth of target in a in a win or something or like i mean he had a, a basically a perfect passer rating but was just checking the ball i mean this was chad pennington stuff i did like his mobility i like the fact fifth he, lowest in a game second lowest in a win there it is yeah yeah, I mean, he, he, oh, he's making great he decisions. Did. Yeah, exactly. He completed 72% of his snaps as team one with 30 points. <laughs> Wait, completed only 72% of snaps? <laughs> yes. What happened in the I'm other 28%? Of attempts. And uh, he didn't complete them. The yeah. snaps were incomplete. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, man. He just left. Half he, he got high. He jumped. started. He started on the field. <laughs> and he just walked off. Oh, man, but that's pretty good. 72% yeah. of the still the vast majority. He stayed out there for 72% of plays. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm out of here. And, and, and he ran the ball, had the mobility, still wasn't good for fantasy. So you, you can't imagine it's always going to go as well as it did last week, and that was 12 fantasy points. Well, uh, Jordan Addison earlier this offseason uh, arrested off the field for speeding. We have a second one, Chris Olave. Reckless operation of a motor vehicle for speeding 35 miles over the speed limit. And the speed limit was 35 miles an hour. Oh, was it? Yeah, he, oh, was, he was going on, 70 man. into 35. Uh, he's been released this <laughs> did I, probably. Did I, did I say he was arrested off the field? You did. <laughs> so, no, they did not arrest him on the field Goodness after a gracious. route. Yeah. Sorry. Goodness. Um, you were going too fast on that play. Get over here. Handcuffs. Uh, um, okay, so, I mean. Do do you think this is going to matter at all? Uh, uh, no, no, I don't. Not think so. not for fantasy football purposes. All right, we had some players dealing with injury before the bye. Um, T. Higgins with the ribs, Tannehill with the ankle, not practicing. Uh, Miles Sanders with the shoulder, and then Frank Wright came yeah. out. And this is a credit mm -hmm. to Mike who said it early. He said the RB mix could change week to week, and it will be largely by committee. So. The, this, this reminds me of the way I view – I mean, this is basically how I view the New England situation, which is like there are going to be weeks like this past one where, where Zeke ends up a little bit better than Ramondre and Miles Sanders and Chuba. Like, Chuba's played well. That's the problem. Like yes, Chuba's, and much better than Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders has the money, but Chuba is the one putting the production on the field. And they play Houston? Oh, man. That'll yeah, be a fun decision. I, I mean, are they – yeah, we don't know how – Miles Sanders' health is going to look right now. Yeah, Miles Sanders to me is someone that I you 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 do not drop. I I still believe he'll end the season uh, as the starter when he gets healthy. But I'm not. I don't think he's healthy right now. So if I had to start one of them this week, I would rather start Chuba in a plus matchup. And he's someone that uh, I don't know if he's on the waiver show today because he's like 65 percent rostered. But you, you should be looking out there to see if Chuba is available for sure. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Put me in, coach. All right. Guess how many bye weeks we have this week, gentlemen? Six? Like last week? 
Uh, no. Lower? Uh, four? Mm-mm. Oh, they're just spreading it out. Two. How about zero? That makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's funny because your natural inclination when buys begin is I'm checking all my leagues and my matchups for the upcoming week, and I'm hoping that I see that my opponent has someone on buy. 100%. But, but first I check myself, and I'm like, sweet, I got no one on buy. Maybe they have some. I went to our matchup. Andy and I, this coming week, are going to be the battle of two undefeated te- Or, wait. Oh, no. Are we both still undefeated, Andy? Oh, no. I don't remember. This is such a just, just such a big deal. Uh, no, that's right. It's I'm sorry, but you're you're you've only got one loss. Oh, but no. Mike, ask me how, who scored more points this past week. Who scored more points? This I week? did. No, that is incorrect. Uh, who scored more point this week? <laughs> okay, yes, you can't pluralize that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we our two teams are doing phenomenal oh, in this I'm gonna league. Beat your. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and and so we match up against each other, oh, and that was man. the first thing I did. I went, I looked at our matchup, and I'm just scrolling down, like, bye, bye. Just tell me he's got guys on bye. No buy, no buy. Yeah, that's week. good. It's perfect. We get to face each yeah, other full strength. Full strength. Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> into the waiver wire we go. We do have four bye weeks next week, but none this week. The running back position. Now, Mike, you just got back in the building. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts on your top targets because you know Daryl Henderson is going to to grab a lot of headlines this week as he should 18 for 61 uh low roster percentage uh, but there are other names like Cream Hunt is going to be taking over for a week or two was already a good option and I want to bring Pierre Strong up because he yeah. had an immediately large amount of work the second Jerome Ford left the field he wasn't amazing but they're going to hand the ball off a ton like those three guys are at the tippy top of my waiver list. What order are you putting them in? So I would put Henderson number one. I mean, the hopefully in last week's waiver show we were you know kind of laid it out of for Zach Evans. Like he he appears to be the next man up, but you just you the confidence in that, and I get it. The people that burn the fab, it feels really bad right now. But I don't blame anyone in the process of if you needed a running back taking the shot because the Rams running back is valuable. Now, remember we, when Sonny we, Michelle was doing work? Right. I mean, it, this the McVay system. It Acre like, uh, not Acres. Uh, sorry, uh, Kyron has had a great year, and Kyron is not at least draft capital wise. He's not an elite talent that the NFL was clamoring to get. Just people have success in this, and Henderson knows the system. He was the one. Uh, I mentioned at the end of the week of he's the one I'd be the most nervous about uh, coming in. And like if I was in Zach Evans or if I was invested in Zach Evans, Henderson's the one who could come right in and just take the job because he's been here before. So And he did. And yeah, that's what he did. Even though it was only two targets, he's still the one I, I, I want to go after. Dallas is not the best matchup, but then we get Green Bay. And with Kyron on actual IR now, you have at least three more games of – of Henderson being the starter. Yeah, two targets, but that was all the targets to the running back position. 60% of the running back uh, attempts, um, 57 to 43% of snaps. <clears throat> it's Henderson. Is he yeah. at the top of your list? Um, it depends on who is available. I would rather have Kareem Hunt. Uh, He's simply, a super roster. So, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Henderson of the widely available guys would be number one. Uh, on my list, but the season long nature of Kareem Hunt, who was already looking like with Ford there, could be a weekly start. Now you're probably missing Ford for a little bit. If he is out there, I'd have him ahead. Where does Pierre Strong fit into the mix? Because uh, you will have opportunities, a successful running game that you've seen, a quick transition from Chubb to Ford having value. Uh, Kareem Hunt has been a little bit banged up. I saw a play where Pierre Strong looked good, and that was the first one of my experience. The first, the first time player. I've seen uh, Pierre Strong to me look like a, a good player. I'm not, I'm not bullish on his talent. Um, so, and and we don't have a ton of information yet on this low grade high ankle sprain. Um, high ankle sprains usually miss zero or three games. And so we just don't know. I mean, Pierre Strong, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of money on him because there's no guarantee he's good if Ford is out 
and there's still no guarantee that Ford is out. They said one to two weeks yeah, at least. I'm pretty for sure Ford. that he'll miss at least one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, TBD. But Do you I, have I, different information on that injury? Uh, just the fact that they call it a low grade high ankle sprain. Just it, we see we see people who, with a high ankle sprain miss zero games. Somewhat free. The two most common amount of games missed with a high ankle sprain is three games missed or zero games missed. Jeff Wilson. This mm. was not what you wanted to see. If you had no. spent fab on Jeff Wilson, does it get better? I, I I do believe it will get better, but does it get good enough? Is the question. And I mean, I I think that. If you're not looking for a player to plug and play right now, those those other names we've talked about are much better for a start this week. But if you you know let other people fight and spend up on those other players, and if you can get Jeff Wilson for cheaper and just stash him and and watch a few weeks, I think that that's a good play. So tell tell me this, Andy: Would you rather have Pierre Strong or Royce Freeman? You know, we talked about Freeman, Daryl Henderson yeah, being Freeman. the 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 main guy in in the Rams locker room, but. It was a a pretty solid split, so I, I'm I'm with you on that. I would rather have Royce Freeman as a guy that could come in, get a touchdown, get enough volume uh, over Pierre Strong. Devin Singletary coming off the bye. Don't forget about him. He's, they take on Carolina. He's very interesting. Probably can be um, picked up for very little fab, if anything. Yep, and I mean he, at least for one week, he was the guy, the one A in the Houston Texans backfield. Maybe that was a one week, the hot hand situation where they, where he was getting all the calls, but you you need to pick him up just in case. And then the another name because we hey we're back apparently. How are we feeling about Demarcado? Oh, so funny, <laughs> so funny that Demarcado like everyone picks him up the week prior because it looks like he's the most talented running back yeah, in the room because he was. And they expect him to get the work. And then he doesn't get the work. And you had Keontae Ingram as the dude. Keontae Ingram, this last week, how do you guys, are you familiar with how his game was? I yeah. am, yes. Zero snap, zero attempts, zero yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. They finally said, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they saw what I've been seeing when I went full fab drop for DeMarcado. He played 80% of the, now it was Seattle, but he played 80% of the snaps. 18 opportunities, including five targets. I mean, the upcoming schedule for Arizona, Baltimore, Cleveland. Yeah. Not not my favorite. <laughs> Definitely not. And those are the remaining two games that we know Connor will miss for sure because of the IR. Will Will Connor be back immediately? That is unknown. But the fact that he got five targets, DeMarcado is this is, is one where I would playable. This is one where I would take Pierre Strong over DeMarcado. Okay. Just because of the matchups. They play Seattle and Arizona the next two weeks, and I feel better about that. Baltimore and Cleveland are going to annihilate Arizona. Yeah, they and will. And we were talking about Kyler Murray's return. Like, if I'm Kyler, I'm like, Ugh. wait till Atlanta, buddy. Wait till Atlanta. Don't come <laughs> like back you for can... Miles Garrett. You know what I mean? Is That's... there any chance they activate him because they got their window and he doesn't start? Yeah, there would be a. I mean, like he's a backup for a week or two? I, I don't think they will do that, but they would have to do that if they wanted him to start, uh, you know, later than his 21 day window. They have I mean, to have I'd be, him if I were him, like you said this morning, I'd be, uh, I'd be noping the Baltimore Ravens who, I mean, the Ravens defense has been, they call that uh, Watsoning. Oh, where you just avoid the <laughs> tough was, matchups. I was thinking it. Other uh, names to uh, like the fatigue on Roshan Johnson right now, yeah, two games missed with a concussion. Even if he's back, he's probably going to take, Darrington Evans, 52% of snap roll, which leaves Foreman in play, which means if Foreman is getting – like if Foreman gets dropped because of Roshan news, like that keeps him – like you should pick him up. Let me tell you the player that you really, really, really need to pick up. And I, this is a must look. He's available in half of your leagues. Tajay Spears has to be picked up. Yeah, I can agree with He's that. He's been looking good. They are past their bye. And this is a team – it will trade. not surprise me at all if Derrick Henry is traded any minute. They just traded their best defensive player. Well, their second best defensive player. They This is a team that is looking like they are going to maybe look towards the future without Ryan Tannehill available. Who's for not the, practicing, by the way. And it will be some combination of Levis and Willis, which... Yeah, I mean, this team's, this team's going to be trash. And so... And it's a well-run organization. It's uh, so I, 
I mean, I can't imagine. If I'm them, I'm trying to get something for Derrick Henry right now. He's not really the future for this franchise. You've got Tajay Spears there. So he's a pickup where an injury could happen, a trade could happen, or he could, you know, Jalen Warren his way into – uh, weekly flex start ability. The other 50% rostered player is Ezekiel Elliott. Both Zeke and Ramondre were top 24 running backs this past week. Zeke got back into the end zone. He seems to be getting a decent amount of the 10 zone work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where the passing game is still going to Ramondre, that's saving him because he's not scoring, but he, another week of six targets in a game that they won. It was really upsetting to see them inside the five, and Zeke was in on first, and Zeke would have, was in on second. Now, they did bring Ramondre in for the third down inside the five. Uh, it, it was the touchdown, but it looks like the, the goal line work on early downs is probably Zeke. Uh, wide receivers. The most, they're heavily rostered, but please pay attention to the long-term value of Joshua Palmer and Rashi Rice. Because both of those players had big weeks. Both of them had anticipation going into the week. We talked a lot about Palmer. When Jason, when we were talking about the matchups, it was like, this is a guy that's had a lot of success against Kansas City. But he's also, you know, five for 133 last week, 60 yard catch. Plays against Chicago this week, a great matchup, and yeah. is, is the clear number two. I mean, Joshua Palmer. You know, there's a third of leagues that he's available in. Must, must, must pick him up. You're not worried about the. 100% increase in production for Huge? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. Okay. What was his total uh, production? One. One for 20. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> it was a good catch-up. It was. Uh, Rashi Rice. He's probably not available. If he is, you need to pick him up. If you pick him up, do you need to play him is the question for a lot of people. I think it's going to depend on the matchups, which means yes and yes for the next two weeks. you got Denver and Miami. Uh, you know, good – uh, you know, a bad defense and Ooh. then a high scoring. Would game. you target him in trades? No, I would not target him in trades. I don't want to give up a lot for him. My expectation for Rushy Rice is not that he becomes the ninety percent snap player and becomes the clear number two target in this offense. That is my hope, and I think it could happen. But my expectation is that that doesn't happen this season. So I'm not. If I if he's on waivers, absolutely going to get him. But I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Breaking news. So I was trying to wait till we got to the other position, but I wanted to hit the button. Okay. Uh, Zach Ertz will be placed on IR. He will miss at least four games. T. McBee. We need to uh, update the old waiver rankings. Yes, we do. Because mm -hmm. he will move up. And we're going to take a break. And we'll be getting into tight end shortly, but some wide receivers we got to talk through first. So this week, to me, uh, Joshua Palmer, let's say he's rostered. Wide receivers are all about the rookies. I want them all. I, I think that this is the time. We've, we've talked about this in the draft yeah. season yep. where, you know, rookie wide receivers are making a huge impact more and more as the years get more advanced in the NFL. But it is usually the second half of the season where they have their largest impact. We talked about Rushy Rice. Great. But Joshua Downs. Jackson Smith and the Jigba, Tank Dell, mm -hmm. Michael Wilson, Demario Douglas. There are a lot of rookies that are needed, are showing flashes, and available in waivers that really should be picked up. Douglas is available everywhere, and I don't know what the redraft is going to be. That's the New to, England Patriots. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what the, the redraft situation is going to be for him rest of season. This was the first game he had a huge opportunity because Juju was inactive. But if you follow Demario Douglas and this offense, they have been trying to give him more snaps. Now, he got injured. The problem was is they were getting him out there more, and then he was knocked out with a concussion, finally returned from that, ends up seeing 62% of snaps and making plays in crunch time. If you're in a dynasty league and for some reason he is sitting out there on waivers, which is super possible, please toss him onto your roster like I did. Yeah. No, it was, it was a great pickup. Um, for redraft, I would agree. When Juju Smith-Schuster comes back, I worry about his long-term value. This isn't an offense of the Patriots that you really are clamoring for. But the drumbeat, if you weren't familiar with Demario Douglas, from training camp and preseason, he was all the rage. And now this offense has stunk. 
and the first time that they really started getting it together and have a an important divisional win over the Bills, it was Demario Douglas who was making the big important plays over and over. So that's where the rookie can just maybe win the job. Um, but ahead of the ahead of him would be uh, Tank Dell, Josh Downs. Those players are um, looking really excellent as as rookie wide receiver options. Kendrick Bourne has been very relevant on for New England as well over the last couple of weeks. In fact, wide receiver fourteen and eighteen the last two weeks basically plays on every play. Uh, sixteen receptions over the last two weeks on eighteen targets. Do you have any redraft interest in Bourne? Like, should he be on your roster? Yeah, if Juju's out. If, if I know that he's going to be on the field because it's... 93% of snaps both like, of the last two weeks. Week, those, those are the two weeks Juju was out. And, well, and week one, I don't remember what the, the wide receiver situation was because Bourne played 91%, got the 11 targets, was the wide receiver four because of two touchdowns, and it was, dude, is Kendrick Bourne actually going to be a full-time player? Because he's, he's been a spot start since his time in New England because he goes off every once in a while. I'd but, rather but, have him than Douglas in a redraft, to be, yeah. to be clear. But then the snaps plummeted back to 50%, then they've been way up the last couple of weeks, and whenever his snaps are up, he produces for fantasy. Would you trade high on JSN? If With you, the uh, fact that Metcalf was missing, you had a really underwhelming game from Lockett. I don't you have a I really, would. really tough schedule, Cleveland-Baltimore, the next two weeks. I, I would hold. Okay. Uh, to because uh, of what Jason was talking about over the second half, and they, I mean, they finally stopped with all the freaking bull crap of JSN doesn't get any sort of depth on his targets. He was a a real, oh, he's a real boy out there, and and he, what happens? Oh, look, he's he's the stud wide receiver you drafted in the first round, the first wide receiver taken this year. Yeah, I, I mean, it's worth six weeks. He he had the a cast on his hand. Like yeah, he, he was dealing, fair. he was that's dealing fair. with challenges blocking, and and I loved the comments from his head coach, which is what led me to put him in my DFS lineup and be more excited about him. Was the fact that hey, maybe he's just wasn't that healthy. And now Brooks, you can't be serious. These drop candidates are are really flying in. Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, Gabe Davis, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Lockett. Nope, nope, nope. I would not be I, dropping any of those guys. I How agree. You can't drop those players. No. But game man, playing Gabe Davis the last two weeks feels bad. Oh, I've played him the last two weeks. I know exactly <laughs> how it feels. I mean, that's that. Gabe Davis has certainly uh, earned his way to being on the bench. But when you've got you know a good matchup, a, a high scoring projected game, Gabe Davis is a touchdown machine for an offense that is historically good. They're they've got some speed bumps right now. Now. I got to bring this up because you know, you, Mike, you you came after Adam Thielen in his thirty three year old elderly body, but yeah. but you have Tyler Lockett, who's been in the top fifteen yeah. at the wide receiver position for five straight years, sitting at wide receiver forty six now, just twenty seven receptions total on the season. Uh, is this a player that you expect to get it going? I I do, but I understand the concern for Tyler Lockett, the, especially in a game against Arizona, which Tyler Lockett has destroyed Arizona many, many times. No DK Metcalf. This felt like, okay, we're getting the, we're, we're going gonna to get the dust off. Tyler Lockett's going to be back. So the, him getting only five targets going four for 38, incredibly disappointing, but are I'm, any of I'm, those... putting on his I'm putting him on the bench just like Gabe Davis and hoping that he heats up. You, that, you, that's what I was going to ask you. Are they are any of these guys lineup locks? Like, no, do you keep them in your lineup? No, I don't think they have to be lineup locks, especially the next two weeks. The 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 Seahawks and the Cardinals play the Browns um, and the Ravens. Kind of they 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 flip flop the weeks, and so those two teams you project bad things for a couple of weeks. That's where you could either trade people high now, you know, try to get something for lock at the name value, the name recognition, expecting that you're not really wanting to play him the next two weeks, or and or trade for those players in a yeah. couple of weeks because I do think brighter days are ahead for Lockett. He hasn't, to me, looked bad. It hasn't come his way. The touchdowns have been rushed in for Seattle. Um, and we'll point out as well um, with the with the Cardinals' schedule, Michael Wilson, we've touched on his name. There's another player where it's like I'm not I'm not starting Michael Wilson, 
right now against Baltimore or Cleveland. But we need to make sure that we look his way in a couple of weeks because when Kyler comes back, I do think Michael Wilson has a really nice rest of season. Give me your top three tight end pickups this week, and you can throw Trey McBride into the mix now because uh, he's definitely relevant in terms of picking up a, an option. Where are you? Where's your top option right now? There's three great options to me. Um, my top option is Taysom Hill, but I think that the top options are Taysom Hill, Dalton Schultz, and Dalton Kincaid. Uh, the doctor was really good before the bye, a couple of games in a row, and you know, maybe he's come into his own in this role. This was a new team. He was obviously been good for fantasy in the past. They need him. Um, so he's worth picking up. So what's sure. your order the, on those three? Taysom Hill. Uh, I'll probably go Dalton Kincaid, then Dalton Schultz. The, the injury to Dawson Knox, I think, is really important for the rookie Kincaid. And the my question for Schultz is, though his success – pretty much correlates with Tank Dell not being on the field and the guy uh Tank Dell taking all those, you know, slot targets, the middle of the field stuff. So did Dalton Schultz get a kind of an artificial bump that will go away once Tank Dell I mean I I get it. That's I'm, a good question. You should you should go after Schultz if you're tight end needy, being the tight end five, six and two in three straight weeks. You you have to pay attention to that. But I have my concerns. Kincaid is at the top of my list. Yeah, I agree. Followed with that. by Taysom Hill and then Trey McBride and then Dalton Schultz. I think McBride, you've seen the Arizona offense. The problem has been targets to tight ends. It's, you know, three way sometimes because they have Swaim there and Ertz and McBride. McBride's been more involved. So I like, I just like going that direction with the potential of the offense. Taysom, we talked about the receptions. You like seeing that. But Kincaid is, he's got a, such a clear path now. Yes, he does. Uh, he's had some good games with Dal uh, Dawson Knox. Boy, Daltons and Dawsons and yeah. all over the place. There's a lot. Is of... that just a tight end name? Yeah. Taysom's and Daltons and Daltons and yeah. Dawsons. Um, yeah, if you want to put Kincaid ahead, I'm fine with that. I still believe that there are, you know, we, we've seen a lot of flashing from rookie tight ends this year in, in you know, individual games and um, Laporte has looked good for most of the season, but Taysom Hill has really proven that he is a difficult to tackle superior athlete on the field. And the way they're utilizing him the last two weeks, we've just never seen it before. Now he's still you, getting, you'd have to watch the saints. You don't have to watch. No, you could, you, you're probably going to have to. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm going to take an Andy Holloway scientific okay, method right. and I'm going to make sure he's in my lineup. I'm not going to watch. Um, but, but you, know, you don't watch players that are on the other team. You have to watch your player. Yeah, that is, is that, that is the policy. Yeah, you, you the got policy? it backwards. Yeah, you can watch you can watch your own players. I th so you when just you can't watch, watch your opponent's players, <laughs> it's very it's very ostrich. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, the but the utilization has been there. I mean, you, I have a sleep mask that I wear <laughs> when my opponent is on the field. You're hoping that Kincaid it's, gets you know six or seven targets, and that's what. I'm pre I'm pretty heavy on the Kincaid side between really? those two. Yeah, I feel like I don't know what Mike. How how convicted are you of that difference? I would I'd be going Dalton Kincaid over Taysom. Yeah. What is the matchups this week? Taysom Hill has a great one against the Colts, and Kincaid gets the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, Buccaneers pretty decent against fantasy tight ends, but it's just the snaps. I mean, it's the fact that I mean, there's just not a lot of players to throw the ball to right now. They miss. Um, Cole Beasley in this offense. <laughs> I hate to say it, mm -hmm. but they do. Uh, other names to throw out there, Gerald Everett. Okay, you can always take your shot there. That's a pickup for no fab. And then Logan Thomas, you know, we're back. Four for 51. The targets were there. I mean, it's okay to ride with him. That's a, not a big fab spend either. Agreed. Yeah. If, and, if Kincaid was somehow out there, which he is in like, uh, what, 59% of leagues, I'd be spending – Fifteen to twenty dollars on it. Wow. Yeah, I'd I'd be pretty aggressive. Yeah. Defensive options this week, Baltimore. Please, if they got you know dropped for some reason, they play Arizona. It's weird because they're rostered everywhere, but I'm in two different leagues. Yeah, why were they last out, week? Why were they, they out were there? Out there, I got I grabbed them in one. You grabbed them in one. It's because they played Detroit, and Detroit was averaging thirty points a game, and people were afraid. Yeah, people dropped them. Uh, the 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 Chiefs' defense has proven to be great. They get the 
Denver Broncos this week, even though it's on the road. Not afraid. Yeah, that is a no. I, I don't feel like there's any way you're burned by that. No, no, I, I, I would agree. Um, you've also got, if you want to get sneaky, you want to look at like, well, yeah, th those those are great defenses. They're not available. You know, oh, the Jets are great against the Giants. Great. They're not available. You want to get stinky and nasty. The Atlanta Falcons. Oh, yeah. They That's, get, it's, no, that ain't stinky nasty. That's good process, man. Yeah, and I mean, the Falcons are a good defense. They you, really are. You want to look for... And they play Tennessee is the point. Rookie yeah. quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks being thrust into action. They almost always will have a couple of turnovers. They will take more sacks. The things that score for fantasy, that's usually my secondary focus. Like I'm looking for a, a great defense in a plus matchup. That's first. And then after that, I just look at like who is the quarterback they're playing and tell me that they are brand new to playing quarterback. And, and I don't think Derrick Henry has a good game this week. I mean, if you look at the fantasy points given up, to the running back position this year like Atlanta is dominating they're second best in the league you know it's not every opponent that they face has Derrick Henry obviously but they are keeping the damage to a minimal making people beat you through the air which Malik Willis and Will Levis aren't going to be able to do and they haven't given up a single touchdown to opposing running backs so I think this is one of those things where you know you thought Atlanta looks really juicy on the matchup sheet, and it's not been the case. Yeah, and if you adjust for schedule to, to factor in the fact that, oh, they haven't played a bunch of Derrick Henrys, they are still the sixth best given the schedule they've played. Packers are uh, – or, I'm sorry, the Vikings are sneaky this week against Jordan uh, Love. Oof, mm. man. They, uh, it's going to become Jordan Hate yeah, yeah, pretty the, soon. Say, I call them Jordan Just Friends. The – oh, okay. Uh, yeah, right. friend zone. The wheels have uh, fallen off. Yeah, I mean, they're not helping Jordan Love very much either. You know, there's been a – Jordan Love has had a lot of downfield targets, so his completion percentage is very low. But no quarterback in the league has had more drops from the running back or less completion – like a lower completion percentage from his running backs than Jordan Love. So they haven't done him any favors. Not having Aaron Jones has hurt him. Uh, and, and you're just – you know, a couple completions last week that probably weren't his fault – and they win the game. Maybe we're talking differently. But Minnesota's defense did some stuff last night that looked really good. They're in the mix again. They're they're a really yeah, low-rostered dart throw defense this week. The Jets play the Giants. The Giants play the Jets. I think the Giants <laughs> defense has looked outstanding for two weeks. And I know everybody's going to run to the Jets. And we don't even have the Giants on the list. But how are they not a play this week? Sure. I mean, they, uh, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. at home. Against Zach Wilson. Well, Brees Hall's going to run for 150. I don't think so, man. You don't? No, I mean, the Giants, the last couple of weeks, am I wrong? This defense, they gave up nine points. No, I'm sorry. They gave up 14 points to Buffalo, and then they gave up seven points to Washington. They've looked the part. Yeah, uh, the defensively at least. Defensively. Not, not, not offensively. Um, do we? What do, about? Do we know if it's going to be? Tyrod or Daniel? I, is it bad that I really want it to be Tyrod? No, because he has looked much better than Daniel Jones has looked to start the year. Did you have something you were going to add? Uh, I was curious if we know Xavier Howard, uh, Jalen Ramsey, when these players are coming back, because the Dolphins' defense will get much better when those elite uh, secondary players come back, and they've got a great matchup this week. I know, I know it's been talked about like they're going to be back soon, so I'm just not sure if that's this week. But if it is this week, you know, Mac Jones and the Patriots haven't done anything offensively. It's a home game for Miami. I think they could score a lot of points. Certainly, this is uh, from Adam Beasley, certainly does sound like there's a real chance that Jalen Ramsey plays this week. And Howard was supposed to play against the Eagles. Like, all the reports leading into that game was like, he'll be out there, he's looking forward to it, and then he just didn't play. Right, so if those two players are back at home against Mac Jones, they're they're available in the majority of leagues. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. I, I'm going to share my streaming quarterback for the week. It's a, and it's, it's somehow a with no bye weeks. It's not a great streaming week. No, it wasn't. It's not a great streaming week. And my what I was getting to is that I am. Jason has chosen my number one 
least favorite to watch player as his. So mm-hmm. actually, why don't you start, Jason? Okay. Because well, let's I, send it in, baby. I, I don't. Send in the car. Dude. Send in the car. So. <laughs> I You're just... sending in the car? So Hold on, hold on. I'll jump in here. Uh, so I, was, I missed Friday's show because I was uh, dealing with an emergency surgery for my dog. But that started Thursday night. I get home from work to uncontrollable vomit from my dog. Mm. And it's, don't crap, we got to take him in. So if you've ever taken a dog to- And he wasn't just watching Derek Carr. No, we haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> but we, uh, uh, if you've ever taken to a, your, your pet to an ER, it's just like a real ER where it's, you can be sitting around forever and ever and ever. So we are waiting and I'm just, I'm watching, like I'm, I'm dealing with my dog situation and now I'm watching the game on my phone. So I'm, wa- I'm watching Derek Carr- and I'm like, I don't know what I feel worse about right now. <laughs> oh gosh! It would. I get the ending of the game was exciting, but to get to that ending mm-hmm. was just an absolute fart fest. Do you forever. remember watching? What was that? You remember watching Brady the final year? Yeah, yeah. That's was... what it reminds me of the most, which is like you get a ton of pass attempts, but I don't want to see this. I don't want to <laughs> see you target Rashad White a thousand times, Thomas. The first half of that game, I just I wanted to print out a. Uh, a photograph of Derek Carr and and just do just throw up on it or something because it was <laughs> it was a, unwatchable. You made me do this. <laughs> I'm going to look you in the eyes while That's I do this. It's one of the this. most weird. I'm thinking. I thought you were going to say throw darts at it or no, like no, you know, punch no, it. No, you it, it you makes print me it out sick. and then you vomit onto it. But now he's my stream of the week, baby. Here, here's here's the the reason why I think he is an actual streaming candidate this week. The Indianapolis Colts, we've talked a little bit about their pace of play, Shane Steichen. The, the, I think they've really surprised in, in an impressive fashion, but they are they are going over the majority of their weeks, no matter what the line is. They Five of seven weeks, they've hit the over. There's more plays run. Um, surprising, I mean, this last I week. I did say it felt like there was an extra quarter. In the Cleveland game, it felt like there was legitimately – Targeting, Five quarters. Targeting the Colts games right now has been a successful brand of fantasy football. And you combine that with what we've seen from Derek Carr the last two weeks, ugly, 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 but 50 attempts and 55? <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's throwing the ball a million times. He's actually disgustingly been a top 10 quarterback the last two weeks. Not to the eyeballs, not in NFL terms, but for fantasy purposes, those dump offs to Alvin Kamara. Um, you know, you you look at who's going to score touchdowns. You've got Michael Thomas or Alvin Kamara in the pass game, or Chris Kamara's Obama. averaging nine point eight targets at the running back position. What? That's... The next highest is five point six. Th- that's so so gross, so bad for your offense, but good for fantasy. All right, just so you all know, associate Jason and Derek Carr this week. Jason, okay. it's Derek Carr. In, it's tough in the streets Jason right Carr. now. C.J. Stroud is the pick that I was going to bring up. Uh, takes on Carolina, coming off the bye, gets Tank Dell back. Nico's been great. Carolina's 27th against the opposing quarterbacks. This is the, the – I was happy to get into the dock before you guys. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, was yeah, C.J. Yeah, yeah. Stroud, and then otherwise I would have been stuck with a guy like Derek Carr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, or <laughs> – Come on, Mike. Hit Dude, the button. I no. I'm going to say we we have to go level three. Wait, you have a third level? Unobtainium under <laughs> yes, unobtainium <laughs> from Avatar. <laughs> Wait, There's, that's the third level of underpants. Yes, you oh. because you will need all three. I kind of want to hear it again. <laughs> Obtainium underpants. Because the pick is Kenny Pickett. It's not a good streaming week. We laid it out. Derek Carr, who was just top 10, that was against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville, the ninth best matchup in schedule adjusted points for fantasy quarterbacks. It was Kenny Pickett's best game of the year. Deontay was back. He's at home. We're talking, it was a 9.2 yards per attempt for Kenny Pickett. George Pickens still was able to do his thing. Pickens Deont- looks great. And with Deontay back, and look, and, and Najee Harris finally had himself an okay game. I know it was a great matchup for them, but <laughs> I hope, I really hope you don't have to do it. But I think there is a world where Kenny Pickett ends up streaming. You stream him and you're like, 
hey, I got a top 14 quarterback this week. It would bring me great joy if you two wanted to like have a little Derek Carr versus Kenny Pickett bet. <laughs> but I just, I would. It's just a bet he, of sadness. He said he would do it. I mean, I don't know. I don't you? know if I'd rather have Derek Carr. <laughs> I was the last one in the dock, man. <laughs> You're putting on the underpants. Fine, put it on the board. <laughs> Water bet. All right, real quick though. Uh, beyond the streaming candidates we brought up, I do want to talk about Kyler Murray and. Yes. You know, stashing him on your roster. Uh, if he's out there, he's out there in fifty percent of leagues. The schedule: Baltimore, Cleveland, the next two weeks. It's gross. Like I wouldn't have he any confidence starting him if he was active in those games. But he's Kyler Murray. Like this is going to be better in the future. I've got a couple teams where, like, I drafted Deshaun Watson, mm -hmm. so I I'm not happy there, I, and I'm I'm throwing out. You know, Geno one week, and then it's Russell one week, and then it's you know it's a competitive league where there aren't good options on the waiver wire. Like, I don't want to start those other guys. I would rather eventually get to the point where Kyler Murray is the player I can play. Yeah, and in order to do that, you might have to stash him for a couple of weeks. You, you don't expect to have him back. Certainly not this week, and and next week is fifty fifty right now. So, um, but it, it's worth it. it. I I believe it will be worth it going forward, rest of season, and the same to a much lesser degree, is true of those ancillary options, the Michael Wilsons, the Trey McBrides, where you, you probably want to wait one more week, use your bench space now, um, but be a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, get them get them before before they break out. I think this week in particular, in for all the reasons you like Derek Carr, or all the reasons I'd be fine with Gardner Minshew. Like I think in that exact same matchup, like Minshew faced the Browns last week and managed to let the Browns have a huge fantasy day. And also, four, he scored four times. I mean, the two of those touchdowns are pretty wild. Like, the rushing ones? No, no, no. The Well, yeah, I guess or, all four of them. No, okay. But the, the passing touchdown to Downs, which was like, just somehow ended up a broken play, what was which the, was surpassed by the Michael Pittman play, which was even more broken. Like, but the pass attempts. I mean, if you're going yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, la this past week, I guess it was only 23 attempts. But um, he had 55 the week before. And he yeah. does. He runs a bit. So. Yeah, he was the number three quarterback. So it's gross. It's nasty in the streets. And just, nasty Minshew. And a, a reminder for, for Kyler Murray, because it feels like forever since we've seen Kyler Murray play, the, the whole discussion has of do the Cardinals tank and go get Caleb Williams and try and move on from Kyler. Do not let all of that dissuade you or move you away from the fact that Last year when Kyler Murray was playing, we have 10 full games of him, and only two times was he not in the top 12. Like He, was, he, he wasn't his elite normal self where we had huge spike weeks from time to time, but he was very solid and a very good fantasy quarterback. Absolutely. All right, tomorrow we have Hungry for More, the Thursday night preview. Uh, we'll be getting into some second-half sleeper picks. Yes, sir. Uh, oh my! Is, can Josh Jacobs be a second half sleeper? Because he's <laughs> he's a, he's already door, been baby. asleep for the first half of the year. I've warned you about the buffet. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just none of the the storyline was a gag, Mike, and yet the, the, here we are. the The nickname was a gag. Him showing up completely out of shape was a gag. But him skipping the entirety of preseason and it didn't just, help, and walk walking right into being last year's Josh, Josh Jacobs that was not a bit. No, and that was it, a concern. Yeah, and it's so much. He gets so much work. Yes, for so little. It's, <laughs> it's the, the, the whatever the orange with the least amount of juice, biggest orange with the least. I mean, I'm gonna abandon the analogy now. Uh, we're moving on. <laughs> like I said, tomorrow hungry for more. Thursday starts of the week. Friday the fantasy face off. Face off where, um, Mike. Yeah, you get to spin a special I do. wheel this week. You didn't get your customary second place. No, and uh, I lots. felt I felt really good at the, with the beginning of the game. With, yeah, uh, with uh, Zay Flowers. With Zay Flowers had a huge catch. So I was like, "Here we go!" And then that was no. It. I, I I ended up with JSN. Jason had uh, Palmer, yeah. who, who carried him. <laughs> Which that I mean, you, we all scored not enough points. No, no, no. Let's we, be clear. Our teams were terrible. Did you guys talk about the Palmer not touchdown? Like his his huge catch where he decided to change angles a few times, and it was like, "Why don't you just run into the end zone, dummy?" <laughs> it would have helped. He's actually – it's funny. Between that and the the week before, he had a big touchdown callback 
on a penalty that had nothing to do with him. Uh huh. So, yeah. All right, that is it for today's episode of the show. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to watch it over there, subscribe, click the bell, catch Sunday live, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.